<laughs> and Buddy Allen called me. He said, you know, Buddy Allen was a tough guy. Tough little dude. I'm glad I got the spinners with him. Because they, when they stayed with him, they made money. There was no nonsense. Little dude, man. Little guy, man. He was rough and tough. He was punching. He was, he was rough. He was rough. And he was a dancer. He danced with Honey Coles. He danced with, he was a, the only little, little kid that was dancing up there in the Shrasa joints, right? This guy <laughs> could go. Little guy. And uh, so they managed, he said, Tom, could you, could he said, you know, I don't, I don't have a body with you because you do such, you're such fantastic. Uh, you're our leader, and anything you say, we do, we do. But is there some kind of way? He said, I don't know how to ask you this, but I'm going to ask you. I said, go ahead, little man. Is there some kind of way you can make in in your recording of the spinners, you can make one song that is designed for the Las Vegas kind of a thing? He said because. If I can, I, I keep trying to sell the spinners to Las Vegas, and Las Vegas doesn't want to know about the spinners. They don't know anything about the spinners. I don't care. All those number one records mean nothing to Las Vegas. So if you can give me something that I can sell to Las Vegas, it'll make my job a whole lot. That'll make my job a whole lot easier. Are you hearing me, David J? Yeah, I'm going. I'm okay. <laughs> you I can hear you great. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting You're talking to, to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting to the ear. That's why yeah. I, want you. I, I know it's like not being over here. But uh, he said, could you do that for me? I said, I don't know, little man. Let me try. Let me see what I can do. So when the Dion work thing came, he kept bugging me and bugging me. I said, Dion, there's no, I don't have any time to do the do, do product on you, man. I'm doing... I'm doing my, doing my behind and between just the stylistics and the spinners alone. Then you got Johnny Mathers in the crowd. Then you got New York City in the crowd. And you just go on and on. I said, I don't know. So something in my mind said, now how can I please get them a pop record, which means number one pop, because she sells pop songs now. The R&B thing is not was not big for her. The pop thing was big for her. And how can I get her, how can I get the spinners, that Las Vegas thing that they're trying to get, hmm, I wonder can I put those two together? So let me try that. Let me see what I can do. So then when I got, got the, I said, I, I got the idea. Then came up with the song, uh, then came you. And I called Little Man and said, I got the song. And told her, I got a song for you. I said, now, here's the thing. We're going to do something you've never done before. you never sung with anybody before. And neither have the spinners. But I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone. That's how that came about. How Then Came You came about like that. Now, thing, I didn't write Then Came You. Most people think I, I did not write that. That was with another writer named Sherman Marshall. Marshall. And, and uh, Pitts, uh, uh, Phil, Philip Pugh, Her Philip Pugh, Pugh. Philip Pugh. That, that, they're the ones who wrote that song, right? But they were both artists, writers of mine. There was guys that that uh, I created. It's like Jefferson Hall and Simmons. All these writers are, are the ones that were under my wing. I, I work with these guys. Okay. So they brought the song. I said, that's it. Rewrote the song. Okay, fine. Did the song. Song. First came out, and dumb Philip Pugh, I wanted to sock him right in his nose. He said, man, you messed up our song. So what? I said, do you know, I don't think you understand what that song sound like when I got that song. Yeah, you messed our song up. <laughs> I said, man, get out of here for punching your head. <laughs> I'll sock you up. I'll give you some man left, you'll beg for a right. <laughs> Later on, when the second talk, when it became big, he said, man, I'm sorry, man. I got nervous. <laughs> I don't blame you, boy. You was just downright dumb. Next time, keep your mouth shut. Unless you're doing it yourself, don't say what someone else is not doing. Because all you have is a song. I rewrote the song, and that's what that's. What, and that's what happened. That's what then came here. When when that was number one like that, that was not done. That was done on purpose. But I didn't know it was gonna be number one. You know, you never know. You never know a song is gonna be number one. You don't know. You and I got a, a question for you. Let's see if you, how good your trivia is. Okay. Latin Casino. Yeah. 1978. Right. You were up in the uh, conducting, conducting conducting the strings for the for the for the uh, and, spinners. And who sang "Then Came You" with the spinners that night? 
live on stage? Thanking you, thanking you. It wasn't Dionne what? Warwick, no, I'll give no, you a hint. No, it wasn't, it wasn't Dionne. Wasn't that Creed? Yeah, Creed did it. Creed did it. Yeah, Creed sang with this. Yes, yeah, yes, it was. Hey, when it comes to my music now, that that's that's the area. That and it's on the live album, and they inter- the introduction sure of hers on there and everything. That's yeah. the best R&B <laughs> live album ever made. You think so? I, I, tell me another one. I did some things with that. First place, that was Gershon. Uh, Charlie Gershon. Oh, was the one that oh, ran? He was with the, you know what I mean? Uh, that ran that joint. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, his place was not, no one had ever done a live album at the Latin Casino. Because it really wasn't conducive, wasn't built. As a live, it was so big and booming that you couldn't, you couldn't, it was just number boom, bang, bang, bang. If you were trying to record there. Yeah, the Latin in Jersey, not the original one. Yeah, the original yeah. one. The original one in the, the, the basement. No, the original one was a Oh, no, 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 not no, that one. No. That's what I meant. Yeah. No, not that one. This was no. the big, nice one. This that one, one was not conducive to anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about yeah. that. <laughs> That's about the size of this room. <laughs> Wasn't it in South Philly somewhere? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, you, but it was like, it was so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was yeah. like like uh, Spider yeah. Kelly's was. It was a little yeah. boxing joint, uh-huh. and the bar was bigger than anything else on the stage. <laughs> Uh, though this was the one in Jersey. Yeah, that's right. I, 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 and so he loved the idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I turned the light on. He's lighting here. Oh, <laughs> you're bad as me. Well, I don't like no. I said I'll be dead long enough. I don't want no what dark places. Just let you know. Oh yeah. Well, plus they had them. I'm sorry, the new spiral bulbs are nasty. And oh, so the energy efficiency of the value. They're yeah. ugly, man. And so I asked him. Could I do an album? He said, "Oh, I'd love that, man. We we could we could really." He said, "I won't charge you." And I said, "You shouldn't charge me anything. I'm not building your joint up." Yeah, it's right? interesting what Jeffrey thought about the album, and they don't even sell it anymore. No, it's it's eliminated from yeah. their catalog. Yeah, they did with dummies, man. Yeah. So I brought Joe Tarsha, the head engineer. He looked did a, did a couple of days and did different calculations of how we could do this and how it should come out decent. They can't guarantee it'll come out perfect because you're, you're cutting off certain things and he brought instruments in to study the wavelengths and the sound, how it went down different ways, the balance different okay? And that's why I put the strings up in the balcony because they, if they had been on stage, strings, it would have, it would have sounded terrible. They, got buried, they would have got buried. Yes, they would. There wouldn't be room for them to dance around no, either. either. So what he did was he hooked up electronically for the strings up there, and he hooked up a monitor, a visual monitor that I could see what the spinners were doing and their conductor, Maurice King. We used to call him Rock Daddy. Oh, he was bad. He was a big man. Guy. Yep, he was a fantastic guy. And he knew some music, boy. He knew more music in his little finger than I knew in my whole body. And he loved me, and I loved him. He loved me to do it and send it to him. He loved watching what I do, how I did it. He said, You're the only young man I know that writes and can write like this. He was a great guy. I called him Rock Daddy. Rock Daddy, what's happening? He was old. He was a big guy. He even t- took no nonsense. Big, big like you. Boy, he was. He was. He was rotundous. Big. Yeah, he was Way big. bigger. He was big. He was re- really. He probably was about 50, 60 pounds more than you. He wasn't as tall as you, but he may have made six foot. But he was around, and he, and I always had a scowl on his face. You didn't give him any nonsense, boy. When he came to rehearse those bands. You didn't play with him because he knew his stuff, and you better not act like you're, that he doesn't know anything because he knew. Because you wrote the music, I would write the music, then he would write the stage music, which are totally two different things. The stage, he take the strings, write the horns for him and stuff. It, that's a, that's that's an art to that. You just can't do that. I could see him on my monitor. He could see me. We could see each other, and I knew what he was doing, and I conducted the strings. And because the string players couldn't see, all they could do is hear. Right. And monitors all the ears, and he watched me. If I created, conductors play a very important job, a play, excuse me, a very important role uh, with orchestras. They can, they can make or break an orchestra, believe it or not, by just by the hand movement. And if, if they show no excitement, the musicians will show none. If it's if it's an exciting part. Or melodic part, slow part, sad part, the conductor 
has to show that to the musicians in his conducting. In conducting, here's a secret real quick. You see a guy doing this? Mm -hmm. And he just looks like this. This is one. That's the first beat. Two, three, four. So the song's like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, uh -huh. three, four. One, two, three, four. You wanna try it? I still don't know how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Try once in a while. It just, it works. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the I give you the PV organ. Remember the thumb? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <this one. laughs> I remember this as a kid. I remember this as a kid. <laughs> Think of what point. Yep. Yeah. Check this out. Put one thumb up, one finger out, right? Now I want you to reverse it. So the thumb goes over here and the finger goes over there. And then reverse it again where the thumb goes down like that, thumb goes up here. All you gotta do is reverse it three times. Watch. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you don't turn your hands. No. One, two, three. And you have to be where that thumb, where that, where that thumb starts is where it should be. One. See the thumb, the thumb not like that? Alright. Here we go. One, two, three. Now, to show emphasis on it that it can be done, it's not an optical illusion. I do it in one quarter time and I give you a little music. The music to Jaws, for instance. Now watch it. Now, and I'll do it real slow so you can see it. You see, no wires, no nothing else. <laughs> watch this. Here we go again. Now do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a job as an NFL assistant coach now. Yeah, you know, you know, signals into that. He's got a little, little career ahead of you. Or, or we give you one that's a bit more advanced. This hand goes out. This hand goes in. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, this hand goes out. This hand goes in. <laughs> You're not even gonna try it. Shame on no, you, boy. No. <laughs> Shame on you. Because <laughs> Dave J ain't gonna try it, I'll tell you now. Yeah. Dave J said, no, no. He'll just smile. <laughs>